What's up everybody, this is Nick and I'm starting a bit of a new um, series here where I share my biggest lesson from the week. I've just completed my weekly review and in that review I kind of look back and work out what my biggest lessons were and I decided that it would be a good time to share these on YouTube so the rest of the trading community can really benefit from that. Before I jump into this week's biggest lesson, please, if you haven't already done so, subscribe. Uh, if you find this video useful, let me know by liking it. And if you had some major lessons this week that you want to share, pop them in the comment section down below because I think that when we share these lessons, we are more likely to remember them a little bit in the, in the future. So yeah, so let's jump in. And this week's lesson uh, is one that I've actually kind of looked into a little bit before, but it really jumped out this week. Um, which was that my best trades are almost always very easy. They're very straightforward. They are very clear. There's no indecision. And they just, you know, they happen to often work as well. But when you have a, a strategy that works at a very high win percentage like I do, that, that is the case often anyway. But I really began to, to see that the easy opportunities on the week were the ones that gave me the most profit and this is something that i know that smb capital are really big on that the most profit you'll make is often from those easy money trades so i'm going to dive in a little bit to what makes an easy trade for me um but obviously everybody's a little bit different but just to give some visualization to that so for me you know if, if you don't know what my strategy is essentially i look for a previous area of support or resistance to hold um, once that area holds, I look for a break back through the 50 EMA, ideally a retest of the 50 EMA, and if that 50 EMA begins holding, we will move higher. The main reason for this is, as you can see, when we begin forming a pretty strong trend, we tend to hold the 50 EMA, whether it's on the upside there or to the downside here. Uh, and those who are interested, this is the 800 tick chart on the NQ, and as I said, the uh, yellow line here is the 50 EMA. So. What is an easy trade for me? An easy trade is when I have a really clear level, one that I don't have to think about. It's like, well, this is very obviously a legitimate level because it was the low from the previous move or it's the low of day or it's the high of day. So when I have one of these very clear levels in, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to overanalyze, it's just there. And these are the trades which I end up getting a pretty high win percentage off of. Now, on top of that, in, in this example, we actually got the second part of an easy trade for me, which is we got a very clean break away from the 50 EMA, giving us this very nice um, you know, period of, of blank space. And then when we pull back to 50 EMA, we held it with this really clean flag. We had four red candles. We had a really nice uh, doji candle right at the 50 EMA and then began pushing higher. So this had this this trade here, honestly, uh, and I, nail, I happen to nail this trade uh, as, as I should do, this was honestly the easiest trades probably of my entire trading career. It also happened to pretty much the moment I got in, go straight to my first profit target and then straight to my second uh, profit target as well. So this was a very easy trade. And it was really this one that kind of jumped out and went, okay, how can I make as many or if not all of my trades easy? And this actually led me to creating this, uh, which is my decision chart update. Update my decision, my updated this decision chart. Uh, in the past, I used this. I shared this in, in my last video where I spoke about perfect situation, legitimate situation, possible situations. What I've done is I've broken that down and made it a little bit easier where I've gone, okay, what is an easy trade? Essentially, here we have a very, uh, very confident in our situational edge. In other words, we have a very clear level of support or a very clear area of resistance as these, for example, show. Very, very easy support level. There's no doubt in this. And then we have a very easy clear uh, resistance level at the high of day and then here again we have a very clear area of support so in these three scenarios we can see that that concept of waiting for a clear and easy level is you know very straightforward and you can see in all of these that there was actually a pretty clear opportunity to get in in this trade here we had that trapping and resistance of the high of day and this one we didn't quite pull back to the 50 ma but look at that weakness it got below the 50 ma it put in a bit of a consolidation pattern before selling off quite aggressively on this trade here once we held that support level got over the 50 ma we tagged it held it perfectly and then ripped higher so you can see that when we have these opportunities in play often we get the easy um 
easy trades. We can see here, this is the ideal opportunity for that short I was talking about. This is the long that, um, that I mentioned earlier. And what I've done is I've gone, okay, in good conditions, great, we've got that. But what about when we have horrible conditions, when we have conditions that are chopping back and forth where the moving average that I'm using the 50 EMA stops really holding any relevance. Well, in these situations, I want to wait for a cleaner break away. So in other words, I'm going to wait for a, an entry more similar to this where we get such a clean break from the 50 EMA. We can be pretty certain that in this instance, the longs are in control. Or in this instance, once we get this very clean break away from the 50 EMA, we can be pretty confident that the bears have control or that the longs have lost control. And same again in this instance here, we've got horrible choppy conditions. We had a very clean end, clean um, level up at the top there. Once we broke the 50 EMA convincingly, you know, we get that really nice blank space below. We also, you could kind of draw a trend line from the previous two lows. We broke below that and held below that. Then we got an easy trade. And this brings me on to the second part of when any, we get an easy trade, which is, um, which is the entry. So sometimes we get a harder trade a hard trade situation which for me is essentially when we get a level that isn't so clean but we get that same for me i get that same clean feeling of this is this is what my edge looks and feels like i have that feeling of maybe we've got some shorts trapped or some some buyers trapped up here or i like to think of uh, in these situations here that i've got um you know in, in this example where this line is and we we fail to get above it that feeling of price can't stay above it it's almost like somebody who's about to drown they can't keep their head above the water you get that perfect kind of feeling and we should therefore look for a trade but the problem is when we have these situations and it feels like we probably have an opportunity we still want to make it easy and the difficulty can be is in these situations we begin over analyzing and it becomes very difficult so instead the best approach to this is to wait for that easy very clean breakaway from the 50 EMA so that we can, when we take a trade, be certain that we've got strength on our side. So we can see here, uh, actually I don't think I've got the full, um, full thing here, but we can see here that we had a very strong, um, we had a, we had a we had strong news pre-market, um, which which pushed Nvidia higher. That, that's, that small little boxes on the left that shows the whole price action. This level I've got here is not very clean. This would not be an easy trade, but it still had the same feeling of we should really begin selling off here. We take out this level, we should dump, and we didn't, which is the same for me as if we come into a pre-market low or the low of day and we hold that level, well, that's showing that buyers are in control. So I can look at this and go, everything is in line with the decision to look for a long. You know, we, we can get behind being bullish. We're pushing to near all time highs on this day. We were holding an uptrend. We held um, a previous low despite, you know, having this sort of like rollover effect where we put in a double top at high of day and should have rolled over. We can get behind the long. So there's a lot of things pointing in the direction of looking for a long, but we should now wait for a very clean and easy entry. Now, in good conditions, what does that look like? Well, in this example here, we have the uptrend. We have a, an okay level. It's not an easy trade, but look how perfectly we held over the 50 EMA. We held the 50 EMA in this instance for, I think it was about 12 minutes. That's a very clear indication of strength, and it becomes a very easy trade. Another example here was that uh, one we were just looking at where we held that kind of support area. It wasn't very clear. But when we got back over the 50 EMA, we got back over with so much strength that we held the 50 EMA on a beautiful flag and then we ripped higher. So you can see that all of these trades are very easy. Now, if I've got that feeling but horrible conditions, step away because you're not going to get an easy trade. In a hard type situation where we're not certain if we've got an edge or not, we've kind of like, this probably should have headed lower. I could look for a long now. If you've got horrible conditions, it's probably chop and step away. So quickly coming over to the charts here, obviously showed a lot of opportunities, but I want to go through um, yesterday, which was Friday, the 23rd of February. And I want to just talk through some of these examples. So straight off the gate, uh, out the gate here, we had this um, we had this push higher and I wasn't really interested in taking any trades uh, it's quite early out at the open. And this level... It, I don't, I don't particularly love trying to predict tops or anything like this. We've made new all-time highs. 
For me, what was interesting is this level that was formed initially around here, around this sort of 140 area, the, the, the all time high, I believe, was at 125 or 120. So we were kind of in that area. You could see that we were struggling, struggling, struggling to push higher. Like we had multiple attempts to really break over this 140 area. And each time we failed and we got a bit of trapping. And this is not an easy level. Right, this isn't a previous high or anything like that. It's a level that was formed very quickly. You know, this was first tagged at 9:34, and this attempt here is at 9:45. So this is a very quick level, but it had that same feeling of this is an opportunity. So where the opportunity was was once we broke below the 50 MA, we showed strength to the bear side, and we had quite frankly the perfect flag back to the 50 EMA. We've got that nice black space in here, but we have one, two, three, four candles, which just hold below it. This is like, okay, this is an easy entry. We can be very confident that, okay, it might not be the, the cleanest setup in the world, but we can be pretty confident here that we've got this 50 EMA tag. And if we were to have taken this trade, got in around here with a nine point stop, we can see that we would have very comfortably hit our first target and then very comfortably hit the second target which was down here and actually went way further than this the next opportunity again was a hard one i had identified that there was this level here i believe it was the previous day's high of day so we put in the previous day's high of day and i was noticing that we had that feeling of price unable to really get back above this this level comfortably it had that feel of uh, like i said before a swimmer trying to to stay above water and unable to, which is normally what happens when you see somebody about to drown. I lifeguarded for you know quite a few years at, um, on on lakes, and it's a it's a bit of a telltale sign when you see somebody bobbing, and they're struggling more and more to keep their head above water. You need to go and get them because they're about to go down, and it's kind of the same here with price. So is this an easy trade? No, it's not because it's you know a previous day's high of day level, which is kind of important. We've already broken it. It's not the cleanest setup. It's not like, you know, we've come all the way back into the high of day, but we get those feelings. So to make this an easy trade, wait for an easy opportunity. And we actually got that here where we sold off quite quite a decent amount from 880 all the way down to 863. So a decent amount. We've got that black space. And then when we pull back to the 50 EMA, it's a very clean flag. We put in a doji candle and it's a quite an easy opportunity. So again, it's going on that principle of this is an easy trade and therefore we can look to we can look to take it. You can see the first target was hit and it depends a little bit on where you'd have um you know tried to get in here. If you tried to get in around 74, then you would have got that final target. If not, you might might have just missed it. But again, it's about making these slightly tougher opportunities, waiting for something that's really easy to set up. Now, again, later on in the day, we had this low and it was retested. And this for me is technically something that I would say breaks one of my rules. I haven't waited long enough for this double top, double bottom to form. But there was something about it that in the moment I went, OK, we've, we've tried to bounce. We've gone through and we've now we've, we've come back through and we failed to take out a new low. This is the first time we are considering going uh, higher. And there was something here that was just my intuition was screaming this might actually be the spot where we see a reversal. You can't always explain it, but going off intuition alone doesn't really make sense. You're going to end up having a lot of these false signals where you go, oh, I think we're going to bounce, so I'm going to take it. And you begin overthinking and you begin going, oh, yeah, we're going to bounce off of this. I'm just going to take a trade. Instead, you want to go, OK, I think my, you know, my intuition is kind of saying this is a really good opportunity. Let's now make it easy. OK, and that's really the theme here. And you can see... We get this strong move up. We then get a flag back to the 50 EMA. Again, it's a very clean flag. Opportunity to get in. Probably, you, know, you probably could have got in back on the break of, um, you know, 18,000 if you wanted, uh, risking maybe maybe not quite this far, maybe in 10 points. Or we might have got in, you know, down here. It doesn't really matter. But we would have very comfortably got to that first target. In this instance, you know, if I'd have been taking this, if I took this trade because I didn't take this one because I was a, a little bit scared to, if I'm being honest. Um, we actually would have got stopped out for break even on the second piece, but it's the same concept. And after that, we did have this big move. Now, later on in the day, there was another opportunity. And again, we now have this. This is easy. This is clear. This is a very clear level of support. So once we have this clear level of support, we can look for a, a pretty normal long. And we can see we get above the 50 EMA. It's not the cleanest setup in the world, but we get a really nice breakout. 
So there's an opportunity to get in long around about um, the 18.045 area, risking, you know, for me, when I take breakout style trades, I don't go to the lows. I go more to, you know, I'm expecting now to get a move. So I'm just going to give it around about 10 points. And we can see it chops around for a little bit, but it ends up going to target. And then the final example I'll share real quick of an easy trade. We came back into those highs. We rejected them. Price action at this point got a little bit horrible. Like in terms of it's not really going anywhere. It's chopping around. It's holding the 50 EMA, but there's no volatility. So it's a case of saying, let's wait for a really clean and easy trade because conditions aren't great. We can, we can kind of see in this whole box here that we're just kind of chopping around. Well, once we break below that box and we then... Um, we then have that sort of daylight, we get a very, very easy opportunity. We pull back to the 50 MA with a very clean flag. I kind of butchered this trade because I got a little bit early, but you could have easily you know, gotten around about the 25.50s, risking, um, you know, in a ballpark of 10, 11 points, you got about say 26. And this, again, was very easy, um, a very easy trade. Now, why was it easy? We, we recognize we're in tough conditions. We had our legitimate setup. We waited for it to be easy. So what I would do is I would, I would challenge you all right now to just go back over your trades this week uh, or the last few weeks or whatever and pull out the ones that you would say worked really well. And I'd look at them and go, were they easy or not? And I would be pretty shocked if you didn't find that your easy trades, the ones that there's no question, there's no, um, there's no doubt in your mind that it's a, it, it's a very clear setup. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see if those ones are the best. Um, so take a look at that. How you can use that information is up to you. For me, my whole process is how can I make sure that every single trade that I take is easy? And that's what this whole decision process is. It's, it's a way to make sure that every trade I take is an easy opportunity. Another way you could, um, you could, you could trade that is to say, okay, when I get the easy opportunities, when I see the the slam dunk, the ones that I'm just like, yep, that was, that was, it just ticks everything, it's easy. Maybe size up on those. Maybe if you're going, I'm not certain on this, something is kind of like making me feel uneasy, but I think it's an edge. Take like, I don't know, a quarter of your usual size. When you get something that feels kind of normal, take your normal size. And when you have something that you go, this just seems so easy. This is like, everything is aligned, it's perfect. I, this is almost guaranteed to... Um, maybe not work, you know, 100% of the time, but you think this has got a really high win percentage or a really high risk reward on this particular trade, go big, go go two times your average size. And what you'll begin doing if you take that route is you'll end up um, having more size on the easy trades that work really well and less size on the hard trades that don't work so well. So a couple of different approaches there, uh, but I would definitely encourage everybody to, to look back through, find your easy trades, define them, and, and maybe create something like this where you have a decision tree that makes more of your trades easy. So like I said earlier, if you found this video useful, please leave me a like down below. Comment what your easy trade setup is or if you have any other big lessons you've taken away from this week. You know, let me know and I'll see you again in the next video.